everybody welcome back to encourage we hope that you had an awesome week um, we just are excited to have you guys with us again let's just open up in prayer father god we thank you for this lovely day we thank you lord jesus that you've kept us all safe this week and that you've brought us together today lord jesus to share with each other from your word we pray lord jesus that you would speak through me that you would, Lord God, be absolutely present in every word, every scripture that is shared. And that we can grow and be better, better for you and for your kingdom. In your wonderful name, Amen. Um, I, we've been very busy the last two weeks. Um, but the last weekend we were out on outreach. And it's just that awesome, you know, that output that you give, but you get back so much in return. And so we are almost walking on clouds this side um, and just just absolutely in awe of who our father is and how faithful he is. And for the last two weeks, God has been sharing something on my heart that I feel like I need to share with you guys today. And that is about friendship. Um, we can, I, I'm sure, all identify in our lives the different types of friendships that we get, right? We get the surface level friends and we get the ones that are, are a lot deeper. And that surface level friends is not bad to have surface level friends where you enjoy spending time with the people. You maybe are acquaintances at church, you chat, you enjoy each other's company, you joke a lot. And that's that's where it ends. There's no deeper um, friendships there or they don't really know who you are. And on the other hand, you get the friendship of accountability of they know your hardships they know your hang-ups and they still choose to be your friend and um, those are the friendships we're going to talk about today those friendships where they're walking with you they're walking a life with you um yeah so i i, I was thinking about mary and i was thinking about how this innocent virgin had an encounter with a angel and this angel came and she kind of obviously knew where her life was going right and so she knew that she was going to get married that she had plans that she was going to most probably have like a five-year plan for her life maybe that's what she was like and this angel came and said to her listen yeah you're gonna have a baby and not just any baby you're gonna carry the son of God and I, and then, oh, just by the way, your cousin's also pregnant, and um, yeah, out of here. <laughs> I just picture how Mary must have felt afterwards. So yes, she is absolutely the picture of what we should have done in any circumstances. The Lord says, go, we go, yes, how fast, how slow. She was that picture, and um, I just think like afterwards, she must have thousands and thousands of questions she must have sure insecurities and what happens if i do this and am i going to be able to do that and what are people going to say and i'm sure these things ran through her mind because she was just a human and she had elizabeth who obviously now she got told was also pregnant and obviously not having cell phones or any kind of way of finding out that she was going that she really was pregnant she had to travel there. And so I, I just picture that she had this compelling feeling that she had to just go and see for herself. And so there goes Mary. Mary is off to go to Elizabeth. She's not invited. She just goes. Um, and she's as she's traveling there, Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit, which is such a privilege because at that time, those times, it was reserved for the priests and for the prophets. And so she experienced the Holy Spirit. And obviously, John also, when he, he felt the presence of Jesus in the tummy of, of Mary, he responded. But Mary, but Elizabeth was then filled with the Holy Spirit. And you know, the Holy Spirit gives us guidance, gives us wisdom, gives us knowledge. And so by the time Mary had arrived at Elizabeth's house, I just picture her flinging open the door. And plonking herself on the couch going, oh, I need a cup of tea and I have so much to tell you. So I can imagine then already like 
Do you know what just happened to me? I don't know if it's real or if I was dreaming, but I had a visit from an angel and I can imagine the conversation between these two ladies. And Elizabeth being older than Mary, um, she had that wisdom already and she had that walk with God and now she's been filled with the Holy Spirit. So she already had an understanding of what was happening. And so she, Mary's coming in all flustered and overwhelmed and sharing her, her story with Elizabeth. And the Bible says that by the time she left, um, she was rejoicing, she was excited, she was praising the Lord. And I, I really believe that we need to have those kind of friendships in our lives. Do you have that friendship in your life? Do you have that person that is going to be your older mentor? That when your troubles hit, you want to just run to, uninvited, knock on the door and say, I need a cup of tea and I have so much to tell you. Do you have that kind of friend? And then are you that kind of friend to somebody else? Are you that older person that you are guiding that younger person, that you are mentoring them, that you're sharing with them, that you're giving wisdom to, that you are imparting to? But that's a twofold. So are you that type of friend? Are you that person to somebody else younger? And do you have that kind of friendship, that kind of mentoring um, in somebody older? Not just surface level friends. We're talking about a deeper connection here. And then we see the importance of having that type of friendship. Um, Elizabeth calmed her. She reassured her. She gave her encouragement that by the time she was leaving, she was rejoicing, praising the Lord. How exciting to have that kind of friendship. What an honor to have that kind of friendship. Um, yeah, and for me, that's community, right? Sorry, the sun is now shining through over here. <laughs> Hope you guys can still see. If you can't, you can still hear. Um, that's the kind of community. Back. That's the kind of community that we are needing. That's the kind of community that we need to be in because of the life that we live. If we are in that kind of community, we have friendships that actually could support us in those very difficult times. Now, how do we become this kind of friend? We look to Jesus, right? Because we are burdened, we are broken, and we need somebody to look towards. And who better than the perfect example, right? So we look to Jesus as the example. And I read something so beautiful the other day, and it said, Fellowship with others is first relationship with God. Fellowship with others is first relationship with God. And I want to read something to you from my Bible. It says here, friendship with purpose and intentionality begins by walking confidently in the light and the truth that is God. It is about understanding our need for forgiveness and then finding it in the grace and mercy at the foot of the cross. When we base our friendships on anything that is outside the truth of who Jesus is, we may find ourselves becoming disillusioned and disappointed with community. And how many times have we done that? I've done that. Where sure, you just go, they weren't there. You know, like how could they not see that I needed something? Or a disappointment like in the actions. Or uh, you feel like they should have done better. Or they should have noticed. Or your, your natural feelings start taking place, right? In precedence. But if you have a proper understanding of friendship through the eyes of Jesus and how he walked with his disciples and also faced all of those things we then get a, a true example of how we should be a friend how we should be gracefully understanding each other's shortcomings and over here it says here next time you're with your friends take a moment to thank God for the reason why we can have such beautiful connections take a moment to remind yourself that the gift of the cross is what binds us all together in truth. Jesus came, he died, and he rose again, not only for our salvation, but also so that we can have fellowship with God and others without the fear of abandonment. Have you ever had that friend that you feel like you can't relate to, right? Um, or they can't really, they just don't get it. Um, 
I remember a time when I was tired as a single person, like saying I was tired. And relatively, I was tired, most probably, looking back. <laughs> but when I was a mommy, there was a next level of tired. And I just thought, one of my friends just said to me, sure, I'm so tired today. And I went, oh, you have no idea what tired is. And these situ situations where you feel like they're just with all good intentions, but they just don't get it. Now, Hebrews 4 verses 14 to 16, that's where I want us to turn today. Because how lucky do we get to have a saviour who can relate to us? It says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confessions. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way as we are yet without sin. Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. A father, a, a king, a friend that knows absolutely everything about us. Every walk that we go through, he's able to sympathize with us. And he just gets us. How awesome is that? Um, another one that we're going to read from is John 17 verse 12. We'll get there now. But as in all things, Jesus models for us what the walls in our friendship should look like and their purposes. And in God, in Jesus' final words, right? So he's, he's at the Last Supper. He he's, he's, knows what his friend has done. Like he's chosen his 12 disciples, handpicked them. Those are his inner circle friends and one of them is about to betray him did he give up on him no he, he kept it there until the very end which i just go wow that's next level friendship guys like jesus knew that this was going to be the the, the end of him and it was to the the doing of his friends like his friend chose to do that and he still loved him and over here in john 17 verse 12 it says while I was with them, I was protecting them by your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them is lost, except the son of destruction, so that the scripture may be fulfilled. Jesus never gave up on Judas. A friendship of the inner circle, you have to be through the good and the bad, and even the disappointments. Even though you know that it, they might go sour, we need to keep pushing on with that friendship. Um, and then I just want to read something out of my, my Bible. It says here, The words Jesus uses, protecting and guarding, are significant cornerstones of what it means to be God's friend. The commentaries spend a lot of time unpacking the power of these words. They give us the image of a shepherd tenderly caring for and feeding his flock. They imply a kind of action that would bravely protect them from all kinds of wild beasts determined to rip your life, your reputation, your home and your hope to shreds. Taking the image even further, the Greek word Jesus used when he talked about guarding, his disciples meant the kind of protection you'd get behind the walls of a fortress or the high unshakable walls of a castle, a place of safety behind layers of protection, moats, impenetrable security and welcome. So here we see Jesus, not only in his friendships, protecting him, the friends like, like a shepherd, but he's also so protective of them and guarding them that he guards them like a, a castle like a huge walls of a castle that's how he sees his friendships he, he he guides them he guards them and he protects them i woke up um the one day and um uh i had that old song in my head it's a lot an old song and i just i just broke down and it's it's that song by israel israel houston i think it's called 
but it's called friend of God. And in the words of that song, it says, um, who am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call? Is it true that you're thinking of me, that you love me and you call me friend? I am a friend of God. And um, it got me thinking of, you know, you get a, a one-way friendship and you get a two-way friendship, right? I've had both in my life. Where you're the one-way friendship is, you're the one that pursues, you're the one that phones, you're the one that messages. And if you don't, nothing happens. And if you continually being that one-sided friendship, it is pretty hard to keep it going, right? Because you feel like there has to be some kind of give back, you know, like a message or a response or an invite. So it's very hard to be in a one, one-sided friendship. We're hoping for those two-sided friendships where it is they find out how you are you find out how they are and it's an ongoing friendship and I just thought about my my friendship if if Jesus calls me friend how am I towards my Jesus am I giving him a two-way friendship or am I giving him a one-way friendship where he's always pursuing me that he's constantly wanting to talk to us He's giving us dreams and sometimes we're not listening. Where he's sometimes showing us scriptures and we're like, hmm. And then when something goes wrong, we talk to him or when we need, we talk to him. And I just prayed and I said, Lord, please don't let me be that kind of friend. I hope I'm not breaking your heart and you're wondering when I'm going to speak to you again. I hope it's a, a two-way friendship where you are spending time with Jesus every day connecting with him, admiring nature, looking at, at the, the sky and the trees and the wind and the rain and just admiring what he's created for you. Are you that friend? Are you that friend that just says, sure, Lord, look how awesome you are. Are you seeing him? Are you hearing his voice in everything that you're doing? Is it something that in your day you just go, oh, you're amazing? We, I just wanted a bird to fly by and it must be beautiful and God does that silly something and you just go, it's just because he loves me. Um, and I really pray that that is what, what, what's happening in our lives, that we're giving God a two-way friendship. How do we start being that kind of friend that is needed? How do we start being that friend that Jesus was to his disciples? First of all, we, we heard that it needs to first come from a relationship with God. We need to first know who our Father is, who Jesus is, and start spending time in that value of friendship for us to be able to mimic that as a friend. Number two, Jesus saw and heard from God. He saw and he heard from God. And his heart's desire was to share that with the disciples. And so that's what he did. As they walked with him, that he shared, like, Father God told me this, and I think we need to go here, and we need to do this. And he did that purely because he wanted us to, to live a life free of sin. He wanted us to strive to be forgiven so that we can have a relationship with God the Father. And are, are we doing that in our relationships? And are we, we seeking God? Are we then sharing what God is, has laid on our hearts? Are we then imparting to our friends things that have happened in our lives and encouraging them to the point like Elizabeth encouraged Mary that when they leave your house, they are happy. They're feeling lighter. They're feeling encouraged. Um, and are we then having that having that that desire that they would then free themselves of sin are we sharing our testimonies with those around us so that our aim is others would be able to be encouraged by that and walk an easier walk with with jesus sometimes they're so burdened and they think that they're only ones that are going through this but they're not if you share your testimony they go wow okay there is hope let's do this um, are they feeling like that when they leave your presence? And number three, are you guarding and protecting your friends like Jesus did? Like a shepherd 
protects and guards his flock? Are you guarding your friendships like uh, walls of a castle, moats around the castle, that you're so protective of those friendships that you are praying for your friends and holding them accountable? Are you helping them to see the light? Are you helping them to um, live a life that is pointing Jesus to Jesus? We need to cement the truth that Jesus calls us friend and he guards us as a friend. Jesus calls me his friend. And am I being that friend to him and to others around us? And so that's it, guys. I just, I really feel that Jesus is wanting us to, to have a look a little bit deeper in how our lives are affecting those around us. And it might just be a handful of people that are on our, in our inner circle. Jesus had 12, 12 disciples. And he walked with them and he lived his life imparting to them. And so I want to encourage you to look around you, to look if you are that older, wiser person. That is there somebody in your circle or in your church or in your, your workplace that you could be that mentor to that you could maybe impart knowledge to, that you can maybe encourage in their walk with Jesus? And do you have somebody that you can maybe turn to in those times when you need just a cup of tea and an offload? Are you, have you got that somebody? And then with your friends, I pray that you would start to dig deeper and look at how Jesus treated his disciples as friends. And what an honor it is to be called a friend of God. And so that we can mold those friendships to image, to you know, reflect the, the image of God. That we can mirror what Jesus, how important it was for Jesus to have that support structure, that community around him. If Jesus needed that, how much more do we need it? And how much more? Are we going to be able to grow from that? Because golly, Jesus already did it, you know. He, he's just so awesome that he could do it without sin. And he needed that support. So I want to encourage you is intentional friendships. Make your friendships around you intentional. Make sure that you know who you can trust and who's on your inner circle. And don't stop pursuing them. And I pray that you would just... Those friendships, if God is leading you towards somebody to have them accepted into your inner circle, I pray that that would just be a fruitful friendship. Let's just close our house. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you call us friend. What an honor to be called a friend of God. That you are mindful of us. That you love us so much that you listen to us. That you call us friend. Help us, Lord Jesus, not only to include you in the big things, but in every part of our daily walks, in every decision that we make, in every friendship we include, in every word that we speak. May you be present and be on, on the forefront of our minds. We do not want to live our lives without you, Lord Jesus, because it would be empty. We thank you that you have included us in your journey and given us a responsibility that you've given us to spread the word of God. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that we would do it honorably, that we would do it, Lord Jesus, with respect, that people won't look at us and say we want nothing to do with Christians, but they would see a difference in us, Father God. Help us and mold us to be more like Jesus. Help us and mold our friendships to be godly, to be accountable, to be supportive and encouraging, that you, Lord Jesus, would be the forefront of that, that we would seek a relationship with you, then know the importance of that friendship, be able to share what you've shared with us, and then to guard our friendships with prayer, Lord Jesus, that we will protect our friends and our circles, Lord Jesus, that you would be more powerful in that community than ever before, Father. We thank you for for each and every person listening, Father God, we pray that your blood would just be poured over their families, over their friendship circles, over their minds, Lord Jesus, that you would just absolutely consume them, Lord Jesus, that the hunger for you and your word would just be present, that you would just grow them, Lord Jesus, into the mighty soldiers that you want them to be. 
thank you, Father God, that you can take just as mere silly humans with all our faults and flaws and call us friend. Help us to give that back to you, Lord Jesus, and so that we can help those around us. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we, we absolutely honor who you are in our lives and in our friendships. We say you are welcome. You are absolutely welcome in our friendship circles. Guide us and mold us in the way that you want us to go. In Jesus' lovely name, amen. Now guys, go out there and be intentional about friendship. Have an awesome week and we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.